Hey, what's up guys? Today I wanted to show you another 5 cool labs nodes you probably didn't know about. So let's get into it. First let's create a geo node and dive into it. And the first one is called labs regions from image. And if you place it first of all nothing will happen but uh, you can select an image. I uh, already prepared an image here. It is this one but I already post, uh, posterized it in Photoshop. So it looks a bit more simplified. So it's already broken down into a few colors only. So it's simpler for the node to recognize the colors. And I'll show you what it does. So we're gonna select the photo. We're gonna press accept. And it will take a second. Then what you'll get is this plane broken down into the regions of the color. You can change the amount of colors you wanna uh, break it down to. So if we go lower than that, let's say we got to five. We'll see. Give it a second. It will break down the whole image into five colors. Here this is a bit problematic because it already loses a lot of detail, but you can go higher than that. You can also go like, what is this, like 20? You'll see we keep a lot of detail. Uh, the colors that are smaller come back. And yeah, so you can use that for a bunch of things, to be honest. I used it in this example to make this logo. And what I did then was blast away this outer part. And I'm gonna show you that as well. So let's delete that. I already prepared that from another scene. So we go in here and let's just take a look at this. I blasted the black part uh, outside because that was from a PNG and I only wanted the circle. And as you can see, I also added an index attribute, which gives me an attribute for each color. So if we go to the geometry spreadsheet down here and go to the primitives, you'll see the index attribute. And if we sort it by this, you'll see that each of the colors uh, is one, has one index attribute. So you'll also see the colors listed here again. Um, and yeah, it's, the note is pretty simple to understand, to be honest. Uh, you can change the smoothing for everything. So if we select this one, we can play with the smoothing a bit. And you'll see it get it will get more rough. And if we hire it, the edges will get a lot smoother. So after we did that, um, I blasted the outer part. I cached it so we don't have to load it all the time or calculate it. And what I did then was um, I used the for each loop with the index as piece attribute. Yeah, so I remesh that so we get a better result. After that, I used the next node we're going to talk about today, which is the poly slice node. And before I show you this, let me show you what it does. So just type labs poly slice. And you'll find it here. Looks like with this bread <laughs> sliced in pieces. And to show you what it does, we need to place a geometry. Let's say um, we want to use the test geometry. Uh, let's use the rubber toy here. And put a view flag on there. And you'll see this box will be created. And if we click set to bounding box, it will create the bounding box around the whole geometry. And from there, it's actually pretty simple. You can already partially see it. So if we uncheck the guide, uh, you'll see these lines. So if we disable the UV and the material, you'll see the colors. So let's uncheck the points as well. And these will be the slices. So let's use an explode node. And you'll see the geometry will be sliced uh, at these lines from the box we saw earlier. So if we tick the show guides, you'll see the slices. And if we go up with the slices like this, you'll also see the number of slices of the geometry goes up according to the slices of the bounding box. And if we visualize that, you'll see you get a lot more slices. And by this point already, you probably can tell that this is this enables you to do so much cool stuff. Like 
your the limits are your imagination basically. But what we can also do is we can change the mode from poly to polyline, and you'll get these lines from the geometry that outline the geometry where the slice of the bounding box is. And if you think back to the thing we did a second ago with the lapse regions from image, you might already know where we're going from this. So if we can do this, then if we go back here and visualize a logo again from the regions and we separate it by the index attribute and we remesh it and then we slice it so we'll get these lines here as you can see i uh, i turned it to 10000 but if you turn it lower so if we go like 100 you'll better see what it does uh it will cut all the little pieces into lines and the cool thing is they'll still have the uh, attributes from the beginning so they all have the index attribute and if we continue with that so if we visualize that you'll see they have a bunch of points where the slice cuts through lines but if we turn that to curves and we resample that we can set all the lines to have a start point and the end point these are pretty uh, dark so you can't tell but they'll all have a start point and the end point and then i'm going to continue doing that for all of them so if we disable the points again you'll see it creates this whole image right now it's hard to see because it's just 100 100 stitches but if we do that with the 10000 we did before you'll see it will create the image basically uh, as lines and if we zoom all the way in you can see them if we jitter that it will break the uniformity a bit and by that we can also resample it and what you'll have is this beautiful um, stitched or kind of stitched image let's go to the third of the notes and type lapse splatter and already it creates a lot of stuff it creates this ground as well as the sphere we have here and if we hit play you'll see it splatters some points at the ground plane let's disable the ground here for a second and take a closer look at this so it will create this sphere where the points are scattered and you have this visualizer here where you can set, um, set a force where the fluid will be splattered so if we go to forces you can change the direction so if we make the whole force stronger by using the magnitude you'll see they will be splattered a lot faster uh, a lot further into this direction you can also change the direction so we if we had zero here and the one here you'll see that it will will be splattered into the z direction and if we hit play you'll see like this and what we'll also get is geometry so if we place a null and wire it in here you'll see it will create this fluid surface for us already and it's a really simple setup so if you want to make fast splash setups or splatter setups let's stay with the name of the node then you can use that and it's also really easy to wire in collision geometry so if we use a grid and use an extra volume place that here and write that in here you'll see that if we move this one a bit so you'll see that if we visualize the whole thing again it splatters against the wall and again we can visualize that it's extremely simple to set up just one this one node and you'll get all these parameters to change the dynamic properties the force and uh, birth rate of the particle so you can change the particle separation to get a higher resolution change the start frame and 
yeah, it's really simple to set up. It's really easy to use and it's just a quick way to make splatters for your scene if you don't want to set up a whole simulation. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one is the Labs Edge Smooth Note. And you might already guess what it does from the name, but it's really cool to see it in action again. So let's create a curve and, oh, and visualize that and just draw a line. So we go like this somewhat. And there we go. We have a curve and we wire that into the edge smooth node. We click on it and as you can see, first off, nothing happens. But if we check include unshared edges, you'll see it smooth the whole line or the, the whole curve. So if you have a curve that is a little bit jaggered and you want to smooth it out, this note is perfect. And finally, the last one is called resample by density. So laps resample by density. And the cool thing about this note is, again, you can do so much cool stuff with it uh, if your imagination has basically no limits. So let's create a line just a simple line and visualize it, set it from, set it towards the X direction and show the points on it. So we have a start point and an end point. And let's copy spheres to that. So copy two points like this. And now imagine you have a phone pole with wires between the two phone poles. By the way, if you want to see how to create wires, check out the last cool labs note tutorial. Yeah, but if you have a two phone poles with a wire in between and you want to place birds on them, you don't want to have a line that is equally spaced because the birds will not sit on it like perfectly symmetric. So we want to wire in the curve resample by density node like this. And if we click on maximum segments, you'll see that we create the amount of segments that we set here. And let's say we want to create like 10, uh, let's check if that's correct. Yes, 10 points. And maybe I want to turn this to something brighter again so we can see what we're doing. You'll have these 10 points. And as you can see, we have these spheres. Imagine these were birds. So we have 10 birds sitting exactly the same, um, uh, the same distance apart from each other. And now if we want to use the, this ramp, you can set a point here and you can change the density of the curve with this ramp. And it's really, really handy to control. So if we change the sphere size a bit again, like two, and maybe put a 15 here. And you'll see how much control you have with this density slider. So we've put a high density here, low density here. You'll see that the line changes depending on the density. When we put a high density here, a low density here, and a higher here, you'll see you'll have some birds here, no birds here, a lot of birds here, and no birds here again. And this can be really handy depending on what thing you want to set up. It's also useful for other setups. So if you have, for example, the stitch one from the start, which I didn't use in this case, but um, if you have a curve and for the only part of the curve that is roughly curved is the start and the end, then you want to resample the curve that it's lower at the beginning, at the uh, midpoint and higher at the end. So like this, and you'll see you'll only get a few points in the middle of the curve and towards the end they'll taper to be more points so the ends will be smoother than the midpoint and that's it for today so these are the five labs notes i wanted to show you and i'll see you in the next one